Hey everyone, this is Dave Butler. I'm one of the assistant coaches at the University of Oregon. Um, before I get started, I just want to say that I hope everyone is staying safe and staying healthy during this pandemic. And um, hopefully you know, we can all get back in the gym soon. I know that we're just as antsy as everyone else to get ready for the season and get our team back together. I also want to thank Valian for inviting me to do this video and uh, allowing me to share some of the things that uh, we do at the University of Oregon that uh, we think make us pretty special. Um, hopefully you get something out of this and you can try to implement it into maybe your game or to bring to your team. So with that, um, let's get started. So what I'm going to talk about are defensive moves to keep your offense in system. So what these are are moves that we teach the players to use when a ball is not going to be hit right at them. They're probably going to have to make a move to the floor either to their right or to their left or out in front. And they need to do it in a way where they can control the ball and get it back to the net so that it allows our setter to use all of her options to keep us in system and uh, keep that quick tempo that we like to play with. Um, if you make a move to the floor on a hard driven ball and you can get it to the net, and your setter has all our options available and you put enough stress on the block and on the defense to have to reset, uh, you're going to be finding a lot of holes and a lot of open court to score on. So that's what our goal is with these moves. In order to do that, you're going to be need to be in the right spot. So we teach the team to, to be deeper on defense, whether you're left back, middle back, or right back. You want to be deeper so you can play balls in front of you. If you're too far up and you're too shallow in the court, you're gonna be playing a lot of hard driven balls with your hands and just throwing it up in the air and getting a lot of out of system balls. By playing deeper, you can use your platform and keep the ball out in front of you. And that's gonna be different for every player. So we don't assign a specific spot of where you have to be on defense, but we want them to figure out where they can get to and how deep they can get where they can still uh, play the tips and the roll shots that are going to be out in front of them. And that's going to be different based on a player's size or ability to read or even their athleticism. So every player has to kind of figure out where that spot is for us. And again, the goal is to keep that ball out in front so we can control the dig. If you have a lot more control with your platform and using the angles than you do just throwing your hands up in front of your face to try to deflect the ball up in the air. And in order to do that, you have to face the hitter with your hips, which means all 10 toes are facing the hitter and you are getting a good read on what they're doing. And it's going to give us the ability to be able to make a move to our right or to our left because we're facing where that ball's coming from. So here's an example of where we set up our deep defense. So as that ball's set and as the hitter's contacting, you can see how deep right back is down the line. So this is as far as she feels she can get where she can still come up and play all the tips and roll shots that are her responsibility. Brooks almost to the end line. She's ready to run down anything off the block to the corners. And this is as deep as she feels she can get where she can still dig anything that's out in front of her. And George's is deep off the side of the block as she can get. So she knows that anything that's above her shoulder is gonna be out of bounds but she's able to play anything out in front. So now that we know where we're playing defense, let's talk about the defensive moves that we use when a ball's not hit right to us. Okay, the first one, our bear cross. So here, head coach Matt is gonna show us how to bear crawl. So as we watch him, watch his athletic position, watch when he takes his jab step, so the jab step is going to transfer that weight and kind of get your momentum going forward so you can dig these balls that are going to be out in front. And the bear crawl doesn't quite take you to the ground. So he takes his jab step, digs, and then walks his hands out. Okay. Again, this ball takes us forward and we keep this ball in front of us, but it doesn't take us to the ground. As he digs, he's taking the heat off the ball and then walking his hands out. So here, if we watch our left back, she shifts to the corner, bear crawls out, quick transition. We break it down a little bit. On contact, she's shifted to the corner. 
Okay, she's nice and deep. This is as far as she feels she can get to where she can still play all the balls out in front of her. And a ball that's gonna be at her head or above is gonna be out of bounds. So on contact, she's making her move forward. As a defender, it's your goal to stay on your feet if you can. So she digs that ball that takes her forward, walks it out, perfect dig. Setter has all three options, quick transition for a point. So the next move we're gonna talk about is sprawling. So sprawling is a move that we use when we have to hit the floor directly in front of us and we want the dig to go straight ahead. Okay, this is like the next progression after a brayer crawl. So right now we're gonna watch our left front, Brooke Nenaviller uh, do a sprawl. Okay, first thing I want you to watch is watching how far off the net she's able to get an off blocker defense. Okay, we talk about deeper is better. That's about as deep as you'll see a left uh, front get. Okay, she's outside of the middle blocker's left hand. She can see the ball, it's dropping in front of her. So she has to push forward and go to the floor on her forearms to dig straight ahead, right on top of the setter's head where she can set a ball in transition. Okay, again, the sprawl is used when you wanna go straight ahead. So if you see, her line would take that ball right to target, right where she wants the ball to go. So she doesn't have to do anything with her body to get it to go one direction or the other. So the sprawl, again, is just to go straight ahead. Right on top of the setter. So the last move we're gonna talk about is one that um, it's a little bit old school, uh, but it's really important in the way that we do things and that is rolling. Okay, so rolling is gonna happen when you have to make a move to the floor that's outside of your midline, either to the left or to the right, or even straight ahead if you have to bring the ball another direction, okay? So we talked about sprawls where you have to go forward, but you want the ball to go straight ahead. So if you want to take the ball another direction, but you have to go forward, you wanna incorporate a roll, which we'll show you. Okay, so right here, we're gonna show you three different uh, rolls. The first one is out of middle back. So again, look how deep Brooke is on defense. Okay, she's a foot or two from the end line. She's making a read on the outside hitter. Okay, on contact, she's taking a step with her left foot, because that ball's going to her left. She's gonna lead with her left shoulder and then as that ball is on her platform, she's going to spin to a quick roll to manipulate the ball to go back into the O. Okay, that O is where we tell our diggers we want the ball in transition so that our setter can set the middle and set quick transitions to the pins. Okay. So again, Brick's going to take a step. She's going to extend, get long, roll. Bring that ball back to the middle of the court. Our setter can set Ronica for a quick transition for a kill. So on this one, we're looking at the other side of the net. We're looking at left back. We're watching our libero Georgia make a left roll. So it's gonna look pretty similar to Brooks, except the angles are gonna be much different because of how far she has to bring this ball back. So on contact, she's deep down the line. She reads, that ball's going to her left. She pushes off that left foot. She gets that left arm out in front to create a good angle to bring that ball back to the middle of the court, okay? And then she rolls quickly out of it to get that ball right on the setter's head, right at the net. I mean, that's about as perfect dig as you can get. But again, if she tried to sprawl straight ahead, she wouldn't be able to bring that ball back to the court. It would go straight up in the air or deflect backwards. And then we're just giving a free ball back or maybe best case scenario, we're getting an out of system where we're just trying to get a shot. But because she can create a good angle and roll out of this, she can bring that ball right on Kylie's head for a quick transition to Ronica. Okay, so this last roll is gonna be out of right back. 
So in this one, Kylie is playing right back defense. She's getting to where she feels she can get to, to still be able to get the tip. So this swing's deflected off of our block. Okay, she stopped on contact. She sees it's off the block. She pushes her body forward, leading with her right shoulder. And after that dig, she quickly rolls out of it for a nice transition ball. Okay, it's gonna be an out of system ball because our setter's the one that dug it. But if you watch how quickly we're able to transition off of her dig, the defense is still moving, trying to get set up. Also, if she just pancakes this ball or sprawls forward, more than likely, Willow, our right side, is just going to have to pop a ball up to one of these two players, either a DS or to our outside who's standing in the middle of the court. So we're going to either get a free ball back or just a down ball. But because she's able to push and lead with that right shoulder and spin quickly out of it, she gets that ball right to where we want the diggers to dig, in the middle of the court, in front of the 10-foot line. And we're able to still transition pretty quickly, even though it's technically not a system ball because the setter is not setting it. So those are the three moves I want to share with you today. Uh, hope you got something out of this. Thank you so much for watching. Um, hopefully I gave you something that you can try to implement into your game or bring to your gym or to your team. Um, and you can now kind of understand the why we do what we do at Oregon and kind of what makes us unique in the style that we play. Um, again, I wanted to thank Valian for allowing me to do this and asking me to share some of the things that we do in our gym. And I wanted to wish everyone to uh, stay healthy and stay safe and go Ducks.